Okay, let's uh, start the exciting topic about vitamin D. When I say vitamin D, you say calcium. Vitamin D, calcium. Uh, good association there. So let's, let's cover some of the basics of vitamin D. Uh, it is responsible for intestinal absorption of both calcium and phosphate. And uh, it's going to be one of your fat-soluble vitamins. So there's going to be four. A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. A, D, E, K. A, D, E, K. Uh, say that a few times fast. Um, another thing, unlike some of the vitamins that we've been talking about, uh, vitamin D is going to be one of the uh, ones that humans can synthesize on their own. And to do that, they're going to need UV light, you know, sunlight, and uh, so that's why they kind of recommend getting outside in the winter so you can so you can make some vitamin D stay healthy. Um, you can take supplements for vitamin D, uh, but you know, since the humans can synthesize it, the easiest and most effective uh, form is going to be the kind that we synthesize. So uh, I did allude to that there are a few different types. Um, let's cover some of these different types of vitamin D. Uh, like I said, you can take uh, a vitamin form. So a provitamin form of vitamin D would be the D2. And that's also got an, a different name associated with it. Um, but it's important to note that D2 can be converted into D3. And D D3 is going to be the important one. Uh, it's unhydroxylated at this point. When, when our body makes it in the skin, we have an unhydroxylated, so no OH group, uh, attached to this D3 molecule. However, as our body processes it, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be transporting this D3 that we created in the skin through the UV light, and we're going to be adding hydroxyl groups to it. We'll be adding OH groups to this vitamin D3. So our first stop is the skin. Next, that D3 is taken to the liver. So the next bullet point, the third bullet point here, it's made in the liver. And so what we're doing is we're placing in a hydroxyl group at the 25th position on D3. So it's 25 OH D3. And that's also got a name to it. I'm not going to cover names, uh, but just be aware that that it's there. Um, and, and what's unique about this one, the 25 OH D3, is that it's the measurable form in the serum. So when you go to your doctor's office and they're testing if you have a vitamin D deficiency, uh, this is going to be the serum measurable form. Uh, so after it's stopped in the liver, it's going to take a trip to the kidney and, uh, and the kidney is going to transform that 25 into 125. So we're going to add yet another hydroxyl group, one hydroxyl group at the one position. So now we have two hydroxyl groups, and you'll have one at the one position, one at the 25 position. Uh, so that's why OH sub 2, I didn't have a sub, but and then D form of D3. Uh, also note that this form, the calcitriol, the calcitriol name is going to be pretty important because you'll be hearing that uh, in physiology and throughout the body. And what calcitriol does is it increases blood calcium levels. So up to this point, I said, remember, when you think vitamin D, think calcium. D, calcium, D, calcium. And this is where it actually comes into play. So we've got vitamin D3, the 125 form. It's been made in the skin, or we absorbed it in the diet, and it got transformed into D3, either one. It takes a pit stop at the liver. After its pit stop at the liver, takes its final destination to the kidney, kidney transforms it a little, spits out this calcitriol molecule, and what it's going to do is it's going to increase calcium in a couple different ways. Uh, it will increase your GI absorption of calcium, so you're going to create, oh here, uh, down at the very bottom, uh, it uses a calcitriol receptor, which is also known as a vitamin D receptor, and what that's going to do is it's going to bind that calcitriol and it's going to act as a transcription factor. It's going to bind to the DNA and, uh, and cause more calcium binding proteins to be produced. Those calcium binding proteins will be placed in the intestine and like their name implies, they'll bind calcium so you'll get more calcium absorption from the GI. Vitamin D ultimately leads to calcitriol which will lead to calcium absorption in the GI. And then also note here, it reduces renal excretion. So it's going to reduce your kidneys getting rid of calcium. So it'll, it'll force either your kidneys to reabsorb more, um, so that way you don't lose as much. 
So your net effect is going to be you're going to increase uh, serum levels of calcium. What does a deficiency in vitamin D look like? Well, two different things. We've got osteomalacia and then rickets. Um, osteomalacia is going to be the adulthood form and rickets is going to be the childhood form of the same thing. So it's going to be a vitamin D deficiency, just named differently depending on how old the patient is. Uh, you'll see a deficiency typically during winter months uh, because of the lack of sunlight or in sun-deprived patients, or typically in patients without very much vitamin D intake. Because remember that we can create our own vitamin D. Humans are able to synthesize vitamin D with sunlight, uh, so it's not the most common disease. However, in those communities where uh, the diet may be lacking, and let's say a mother is breastfeeding a child, and the mother really has kind of a vitamin D deficiency, uh, so you don't have very much calcium passing through the breast milk, uh, so therefore the child will also have vitamin D deficiency. Um, you'd call the mother's osteomalacia, you'd call the child's rickets. Um, so let's start with osteomalacia. Uh, what it is, is it's going to be a, a state of poor bone mineralization. So your bone is made out of calcium and phosphate and a whole bunch of other stuff, collagen as well, but uh, you're going to have poor bone mineralization, so you're going to have low calcium levels within the bone. And some of the causes I listed here, like a renal disease, uh, could be acute or chronic re renal disease, more, more likely to be a, like, uh, a long-standing uh, like acute or chronic kidney failure, chronic renal disease. That's going to cause more of the osteomalacia symptoms. You could have malabsorption, low vitamin D, and many other symptoms or causes. Some of the symptoms you'll see are bowing of legs, proximal muscle weakness, bone fragility. Uh, there are big list again. Um, these are some of the main ones. And then also when you have low, low serum calcium, your thyroid, your parathyroid hormone is going to kick out, uh, kick out some hormone, parathyroid hormone, and it's going to be high. What parathyroid hormone is going to do is it's going to increase your bone breakdown. And it's going to increase your bone resorption or calcium resorption in, uh, in your gut. And it's going to prevent your kidneys from, from uh, spitting out kid or calcium. So the net effect with parathyroid hormone is to try and increase your body's calcium level. And to do that, it's going to break down stores of calcium. What better store than the bone, the teeth, the bone in the teeth, uh, parathyroid hormone will be high because you'll have a low calcium, that parathyroid hormone is an excellent indicator. Uh, rickets. Rickets is going to be uh, a trademark finding here. Um, I did take this from the site that I listed, and it's going to be called, uh, in scientific terms, genu varum. So uh, what this is is bow legging. And I talked about that in osteomalacia. This is a very common and almost hallmark symptom of of rickets. So in children you'll see these bending of the long bones. So here you can see the femur uh, at a very peculiar angle causing a bow leg syndrome. Um, so here again it's a childhood. You'll see a lot of the same symptoms as you would in osteomalacia in adulthood. However here you also may see green stick fractures which are incomplete fractures, um, growth disturbances as well. And again it's very straightforward. You treat with dietary vitamin D, vitamin uh, calcium, sunlight, supplements, etc. Here's where I got all my information for vitamin D. Uh, also, I uh, put in some of my own knowledge from medical school and hope you'll stick with me. I think we're going to be covering vitamin E next. Thank you very much.